Hello scholars. Today we're going to continue our journey learning about microbial physiology tests that we use in the lab in order to help us identify different organisms. We have already covered PR fermentation as well as the MRVP. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at the urease test, BEA, citrate, decarboxylase, and PDA. We will follow up with the next four tests in another video. First up, we have the urease test. As you can probably tell from the name, urease is an enzyme that allows organisms to utilize urea that's in its environment. So this test would be answering the question, does the organism hydrolyze or break down urea? Urea is a waste product in the urine of many land animals, and the urea within the urine can be broken down by certain bacteria into ammonia and carbon dioxide. Many enteric bacteria possess the ability to metabolize urea, and the urease genes are activated when urea is present. Let's look at the ingredients of this medium. First, there is urea. Of course, we are going to provide urea to the organism to see if we can break it down or not. Next, there is yeast extract. The yeast extract is the only source of nutrients in this medium. This media is also highly buffered, so this is the role that potassium phosphate would serve. If an organism is capable of using urea as a sole nitrogen source and produces sufficient quantities of ammonia, it will overcome the high buffering capacity of this medium and it will result in a color change. The color change is brought about by phenol red. Now let's talk results. Usually this medium is an orange color as seen in the circled tube. If the organism is not able to utilize urea, then there will be no ammonia formed. Therefore, the pH will remain below 8.4 and the phenol red indicator will cause the media to remain orange or turn more yellow. However, if the organism is able to utilize urea, then ammonium will be formed. Ammonia is alkaline, so it will raise the pH to above 8.4, causing the color change to be hot pink. Therefore, a positive result would be hot pink for the urease test, and orange or yellow is a negative result. If the organism contains urease, and is able to break down urea into ammonia and CO2, the ammonia would cause the pH to raise and the media would turn hot pink. The next test on our list is the bile esculin agar test, BEA. And this test answers the question, is the organism able to hydrolyze esculin in the presence of bile? There are some organisms that possess the enzyme esculinase and can break down esculin, but what this test is particularly looking for are those organisms that can break down the esculin in the presence of bile. Organisms that can break down esculin in the presence of bile are much more limited. So it makes this particular medium very selective. Let's take a look at the ingredients. There is beef extract and gelatin, and these serve as nutrient sources. Included in this medium is esculin. And what we're going to look at is, can this organism utilize this esculin? Now, how can it utilize the esculin? It must possess the enzyme, and the enzyme is esculinase. If the organism has esculinase, then it would be able to break down the esculin into esculatin. The other ingredient here is the ox gall, which is the source of bile. Remember, the special thing about this particular test is seeing if the organism can break down the esculin in the presence of bile. If the organism is able to break down the esculin in the presence of bile, the esculatin that is produced will react with the ferric citrate that is also a part of this medium. When it reacts with the ferric citrate indicated here, Fe3, that's ferric citrate, then the result would be a dark brown precipitate as seen in this tube. Let's have a look at the particular results that you may receive from this test. In the lab, when we are reading these results, I've always found it helpful to hold it up against an uninoculated tube so that the color changes can be perceived more readily. The first tube here is not darkened. Therefore, this would be negative. The darkened tube indicates a positive result. If there is no blackening, then we consider this a negative result. Now let's move to our third test for the day. 
which is the citrate test. This test is also a utilization test. If the organism possesses citrate permease, an enzyme, then it will be able to use citrate that we provide to it in the medium as the sole carbon source. This particular test is used to differentiate between members of the Enterobacteriaceae, all of which are facultative anaerobes. Because they are facultative anaerobes, that means that they can ferment glucose, but they also have the ability to do anaerobic respiration. So they have a functional citric acid cycle. Now this test does not tell us about their citric acid cycle, but instead it tells us about their ability to use citrate as their only carbon source and perform citrate fermentation. This particular medium is a defined medium. So we know every single thing about the medium. We know the sources of all that it contains and the exact measurements. It possesses sodium citrate so that if the cell contains citrate permease, it would take that citrate and transport it into the cell and perform citrate fermentation. These organisms must also be able to survive with ammonium as the sole nitrogen source. So in the medium, we also include ammonium phosphate. If the bacteria does not contain citrate permease, then it would not be able to survive in this medium. The medium also contains other nutrients and it contains bromothymol blue. This is a pH indicator. Bromothymol blue is green at pH 6.9, but blue at pH 7.6. As the pH goes up, the medium would change from green to blue. Therefore, the conversion of the medium to blue is a positive citrate test result. In the tube shown here, the green tube would be considered negative and the tube that turned blue would be considered positive. So let me make sure that you understood what caused the color change for the medium. Any bacterium that is able to survive in this medium and utilize the citrate can also convert the ammonium phosphate that is in this medium to ammonia and ammonium hydroxide. Ammonia and ammonium hydroxide both cause the agar to become more alkaline, resulting in the blue color. This would be a positive test. Our next test in the battery of tests that we are looking at today would be the decarboxylase test. The decarboxylase broth test for the production of the enzyme decarboxylase. So decarboxylase is actually able to remove the carboxyl group from an amino acid. Of course, I'm hoping that you remember that amino acids are made up of that central carbon with the hydrogen attached to it, the carboxyl group, an amino group, and the side or R group. The decarboxylase enzyme will cause the carboxyl groups to be removed from the amino acid. So the question here is, does this organism produce a specific decarboxylase? In our lab, there are three amino acids that we test in our decarboxylase media. We have odyssey, and the O refers to the amino acid ornithine. Then we have ADC, which is referring to the amino acid arginine, and we have lysine. These are the three that we test for in our lab ornithine decarboxylase, arginine decarboxylase, and lysine decarboxylase. Does the organism produce the specific decarboxylases to rip off that carboxyl group off of these amino acids? Let's take a look at the ingredients. The decarboxylase broth contains nutrients like dextrose, which is a fermentable carbohydrate, and also peptone, which is a source of protein. It also contains pyridoxal, which is an enzyme cofactor for the decarboxylase enzyme. And the broth is enhanced with the particular amino acid in question. Again, those would be lysine, ornithine, and arginine. Let's take a look at the reactions. For the lysine decarboxylase, the organism would be able to take lysine and break that down into cadaverine. So the cadaverine is the product in the lysine decarboxylation. For the ornithine decarboxylation, the putrescine is the product. And for the arginine decarboxylation, and for the decarboxylation of the amino acid arginine, the amine agmatine is produced. Certain organisms are capable of degrading that agmatine into putrescine, which we saw in the ornithine decarboxylation, 
and it also breaks it down into urea. And then those strains with the urease that we talked about previously would be able to break down the urea further into ammonia and carbon dioxide. These are the three types of decarboxylase enzymes and the three reactions that they would govern in some organisms' cells. Each decarboxylase enzyme produced by an organism is specific to the amino acid on which it will act. So all of these media would be similar except for the particular amino acid that is added to it. And I just want to draw your attention back to the fact that the decarboxylation is where the carboxyl group is being removed. And you can see the carboxyl group, the COOH, in each of these amino acids. If an organism is able to decarboxylate the amino acid present in the medium, then the cadaverine or the putrescine that is produced is very alkaline. These products are sufficient to raise the pH of the media so that the broth turns purple. The pH indicator in the medium is bromocresol purple. Below 5.2, it is yellow, but if the organism is able to decarboxylate the particular amino acid, the end products would cause it to become more alkaline and the media will turn purple. Here we have an array of the results that we may receive for this particular test. In tube A, it is purple, therefore it is positive. Tube B, there is no change, so this is considered negative. And in C, it is yellow, so we also consider that negative. The only positive result is a purple color. The yellow in tube C comes about because as the organisms are fermenting the dextrose, there will be acidic byproducts that are formed and that's going to turn the media yellow. Now there is one very important point when running this particular test. Mineral oil must be added after the inoculation. So on the first day that you retrieve your decarboxylase tubes, you would inoculate it and then you will add mineral oil to create a layer of the oil over the broth. This is done to seal out external oxygen and promote fermentation. In each of these tubes, you can see that the oil had been placed in the tube. This happens before incubation. If the tube is incubated without the oil, even if there is a color change to purple, we would not be able to consider that a reliable result. Therefore, it could not be used. The test would need to be rerun because the oil must be present so that it can block out the oxygen and promote fermentation. Please remember that anytime a debroxylase test is run, before incubation, mineral oil must be added. Now we are finally on our last test. This is the PDA or the phenylalanine deaminase test. And it's the perfect test to follow up with after the decarboxylases. Because when we discussed the decarboxylase, we reviewed the fact that the carboxyl group is a part of the amino acid and decarboxylation is removing that carboxyl group. Also, there is an amino group on an amino acid and removing that would be deamination. So deamination is what we are focusing on for this particular test. And the amino acid here is phenylalanine. This test answers the question, does the organism produce phenylalanine deaminase? Organisms that produce phenylalanine deaminase can be identified by their ability to remove that amino group from phenylalanine. The reaction is shown here. The amino acid phenylalanine is being circled in red. And you will observe the NH2, which is the amino group. If the organism possesses phenylalanine deaminase, then it will remove that amino group, the NH2. And the result will be phenylpyruvic acid and ammonia. Now, the second part of this test requires that ferric chloride be added. So after incubation, some drops of ferric chloride will be added to the tube. If the organism possessed phenylalanine deaminase, then phenylpyruvic acid would have been formed. This phenylpyruvic acid reacts with the ferric chloride that is added and it will result in a green complex forming. Here are the results. The very first tube, tube one, is simply showing growth on the medium. Tube two is showing the result of an organism that is PDA negative. There is no green complex that formed. But tube three shows a green complex, 
which means that phenylpyruvic acid must have been present so that the ferric chloride can react with it. This means that the organism possessed phenylalanine deaminase. Thus, it is positive for the PDA test. This wraps up all of the tests that I wanted to cover in this particular video. Now, all we have left is the sim, nitrate, oxidase, and catalase, and these will all be covered in the third video. As usual, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to email me or text me. And in the meantime, happy studying.